Hello. <laughs> it's day 15, I think. I can't keep track anymore. But we are at the Palacio de Arce, something like that. And it's one of the nicest hotels we've stayed in. Look at their sugar. It has a camel on it. It was meant to be. And we're leaving for our bus day today, which means we're going to bus how many hours? I'm like, like eight. Which is going to be fun. <laughs> And poor Emily is not feeling that well, but she's a constant champ of perseverance. <laughs> she's had blisters, she's been sick, and she just keeps going, and I'm impressed. Anyways, that's our plan. And we're gonna end up at the city, or right before the city that begins the 100K to Santiago de Compostela. But until then, busing it. So excited. <laughs> for an hour and we don't know what's going on no. we're just sitting here watching the bus that doesn't leave without us because with our history that could happen yeah we barely made this bus yeah they closed the door on us we had to run it was amazing i had to use broken french on one machine because we didn't buy tickets since we were locked in to the train station yeah. so we had to figure that's a whole thing and then we had to run from there get a bus ticket for a bus that was leaving within four minutes, which Emily masterfully did. I got it done. Yeah, we got it done. Now we're here on our way to, do you remember how to say it? No, oh, it starts with a G and it ends with a C and like eventually I'll get off when my Google map tells me to. And then we'll walk 100K. Okay. Finally arrived. After how many hours of busing was that? Oh, like eight? Eight hours of busing. We are so actually excited for the first time to be walking right now. Normally, I was telling Emily, normally by this time of the day, we don't want to take one step more. But we are excited, we're walking to our hotel. And then tomorrow we begin the final 100 kilometers to, uh, to uh, Santiago. It's taken a lot to get here. <laughs> Normally trying to film a lot of bathroom scenes, believe me, but you've got to see this bathroom. It is like the smallest bathroom I have ever been in in my freaking life. So here we are to, to go to the bathroom. I literally have to sit sideways because there's no room. Is this even legal? Got our self-served breakfast. In our hotel, we're staying at our final hotel until Santiago. Now it's five days of walking in Pilgrim Albergues, so we gotta we gotta fuel up. Update: We are in Bamande, which is the city that is 100 kilometers from the final destination that we are hoping to head to. So we're at this very cool church that dates back as early as the 9th century, which you don't really get in America. So this is cool. And we are trying to find a stamp, a place that can give stamps because you might have seen throughout the videos that everywhere we go, like hostels or churches, you get a pilgrim stamp in your pilgrim credential passport. And for the last 100k, you, you have to get two stamps a day or else you don't finish the Camino, right? Oh, the pilgrimage. You don't the get the certificate. Yeah. And what's what's a pilgrimage without getting a certificate saying wanna, that you did it? You want to win. <laughs> we're not here to become better people. We're here to win. So, yeah, it is. We're, we're really being humbled, actually. <laughs> if you haven't watched the videos, you know we're being humbled on this journey because <laughs> a lot of things go wrong. We figure it out anyways. Uh, by God's grace. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna try to find somewhere open and then the plan is to walk only nine miles today. No. Yep. Yep. Other thoughts for our day as we begin our last week? Oh, I mean, a lot of stuff has taken us up to this point. We've, we've conquered and we've lived through and we've experienced blisters, <laughs> a language barrier, and yes. 
the heat and the cold trusting that it's all gonna work out and so far it has so far it has it has <laughs> and like we, we keep saying it's not what we expected but it seems to be what we needed mm -hmm. and we wouldn't change it it's just i don't know it's just there's a, there's a lot of things each day that take a, a lot of energy and decisions and getting lost and trying again and getting lost in conversations and because we don't know spanish and yeah it just takes a lot of energy but it's worth it so yeah okay well let's go <laughs> <laughs> until Santiago and we are excited and nervous and it's gonna happen so here we go all right <laughs> we we're walking and we just passed the little or one of I guess several places where you can leave your stone that you're supposed to bring from home that represents your burdens that you want to leave behind or work through on the Camino. So we have been, well, I, <laughs> I brought a rock from home. <laughs> I forgot. She forgot her burdens. <laughs> so such a, a healthy place. But I've been carrying a lot of soap. Yeah. We've been carrying heavy soap. So we've been switching back and forth. I carry the soap, she carries the stone and we can switch. And so we have literally been bearing each other's burdens sure. uh, in a symbolic way and in a physical way as we have helped each other where we needed to. I think that trying to figure out where to leave our stone, like what is the correct place, is like not a thing. No. A lot of this pilgrimage has not been doing it right per se, <laughs> but just like being led, feeling it out. Praying each day that God brings the right people, the right timing. Yep, the right situations for us the right place to leave our stone because you you really do have to leave it where it feels right mm -hmm. when you feel like you're at a place where you're actually ready to let go of something or work through it yeah so we're gonna get out of the way for the bikers real quick because there are a lot of bikers in spain i think we really enjoy doing things right we want to do it right we want to do it the best because we read all the the blogs we watch the vlogs we're like we gotta do this the right way and what is the right way to hike 300 miles slash not at all 300 miles because we did not make that goal. I might go to 200. <laughs> nice. I swear, I was just saying this. In Spain, there's like no one out at all. And then all of a sudden, everyone and their mothers is like running you off the road. <laughs> it's Friday. It's time to get stuff done. <sighs> So, all this to say, I am glad that we've been able to just let the Camino happen to us and let go and let God. And we are gonna bear our stone until we feel it's right, mm -hmm. which will probably be at the very end. I think uh, something I have also been learning is letting go of the idea of what kind of spiritual pilgrimage this is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I think, as always throughout my life, I think I have struggled with like, putting a lot of pressure on myself of like, I should be feeling this way, or I should be feeling absolute peace, or I should be feeling, hearing God's voice so clearly, right? Or all these things that you just maybe assume will happen naturally on the pilgrimage. And more than not, <laughs> it's been <laughs> not feelings of Zen and peace, <laughs> but feelings of like, I need help. And maybe that's exactly what I needed when it comes to just deepening my relationship with God. So I heard an amazing sermon by an Icelandic pastor who said, if we really believe that we're gonna spend eternity in glory, then this is the only time we get to worship God in the valley. Mm. And so I was like, ah, oh, this is the only time I get to worship God with busted feet. This is the only time that Karis gets to worship God through experiencing anxiety on not knowing what to do. Yeah. So we just kind of pray through it. Yeah. And release it, let it go. Yep and then usually the answer comes very quickly. Those are some reflections from the Camino Cousins yes. as we walk our final, not even 100K anymore. It's 99. If we uh, see a mile marker, which we probably should check our map because I haven't seen it in one in a while. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't be surprised if we were lost. We are lost a lot. We're Anytime lost. I'm like, we're gonna get to the hotel by eight. I'm like, just add an hour onto it. No, we're lost, but we will be found. We and we'll see you on the way. <laughs>
On day, I don't even, I think it's 18. 18, I think so. And we are walking to a cool monastery. And we always say this is the last time, but we have somehow found ourselves yet again walking for a, a pretty lengthy amount of time without food or AKA water. The entire day. The yeah. entire day. Anyways, word to the wise just bring food. Just go to the stores before the night before and bring food. I am not always as motivated because it's heavy. So I'm like, I don't want to carry it. I just want to eat it at each rest or at each place we stop. Oh wait, weren't you carrying food that you gave to cats? <laughs> this may be true. I may have given all of the bread and granola bars I had to some starving cats and dogs. I am not that way. So it's... I kept my food and now I keep Karis. <laughs> Another starving cat. Ah, <laughs> uh, when helping hurts. Quite literally, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard for me to like think about the logic of like needing the food myself when I see these animals. So anyways, I hope that they can be nourished from it because now I will steal from Emily. And we are at mile, what are we at? We got seven, seven kilometers left to go. All right, so anyways, we're gonna see how we do and feel after walking all day without food. miles <laughs> it's, it's close <laughs> okay guys we hiked almost 13 miles for some bits of bread and some meat and cheese and you know what it looks amazing right now not the food we thought we'd be ordering but i think the food we needed this is enough bread and cheese and meat comes back to the basics oh and coke my dentist will be so happy about this I think I have figured out the shell. I told you, right? Yeah. That all of these are the different uh, Camino ways you can take, and they all end up in Santiago. That's what I think. But I also could be very wrong. Because of everything else here, I would say that looks the most like a monastery. So let's go and see if there are beds left. Hi, buddy. Oh. So this might be the most epic albergue we've stayed in. I think so. It's possible. So we started here and we did make it, you know, ways with some minimal busing oh and we even went further and then we went back and then we bussed all the way to the monday and then we just walked to here 